What's up guys, Larry Chen here. Welcome to Hoonigan Autofocus. And by popular demand, I'm featuring this, the most wanted M3 GTR. This is Van, How's the owner and builder. What's up What's guys? Up? Thank you so much for bringing this out. So the reason why I say popular demand, it's because I posted a picture of this, not actually of this car, it was just, it just happened to be in the background of one of my photos. <laughs> because we're at Bells and Vaughn and they hold meets here, monthly meets. And there's so many cars packed into this lot oh, yeah. that Crazy. you can't actually take a proper photo of any car, really. Because they're all just, you know, butt to nut parked. Yep. And yours just happened to be all the way in the back you probably showed up pretty early. Uh, yep, I tried to be on time. Yeah, so you, sh you showed up early and then therefore you got completely surrounded. Yep. So then I was taking a picture of another car and your car happened to be in the background and I cannot tell you how many DMs I got. <laughs> I, I got so many DMs, hey, show us more of that M3, show us more of that. Yeah, so now we're here, we're back at Bells and Vons, which thank you guys so much for letting us use your space they actually do car restorations and just body work in general here in Pasadena, California. But yeah, here it is. Here it is in the flesh. It looks amazing. Um, what did this start life as? It started off as just an E46 M3. I mean, they're not a bad place to start to begin with. Very early on when the game Need for Speed Most Wanted first came out, I knew that I wanted to own this car. At the time, there were, the GTR wasn't even around for public. It's not set up like this. Uh, and an M3 was about $60,000 when I'm just a junior in high school. So that was out of the question. But years later, finally got that dream come true. It's kind of interesting to me how much video games have really, uh, I guess, shaped yeah. the way car culture is now. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Um, for example, a lot of times it's really unfortunate, but when I feature cars like the 86, yeah. or I feature something like the Hoonicorn, or or I feature these cars that were in, for example, Grand Theft Auto. Right. They say, oh, it's the Futo this, or yep, it's the, yep. they, they <laughs> talk about the name that's not the correct name for these yep. cars, right? It's such a weird thing. But honestly, the reason why that is, is because video games are the movies of our generation. You know, like a lot of people spend so much more time playing these games, playing Gran Turismo, playing Need for Speed. Yep. And that's how they learn about cars. Honestly, I learned so much about cars from Gran Turismo and from Need for Speed, honestly. Oh yeah, oh totally. And that's really what it was, the fact that up until that point, um, my generation was playing Need for Speed Underground 1, 2, Sega GT Online, Gran Turismo, and you get, oh, the Supras and the Skylines, and then this, came, this car cover came out, and it's like, what is this? It's a BMW, an M3 GTR? I don't know what that is. And then, of course, it introduces it introduced me to, oh, the GTR legacy team, like racing all around, smashing records. And it's like, this car is mean, in and out of the game. Like, all right. Yeah, so, uh, okay. And I have to admit, video games have done so much for me, too. They inspired me. For example, I played Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed, right? Yep. That was, I think, so ahead of its time. And then, like, the Halo car, the last car that you get, when you play that game is the 996 Turbo because it was of that era, right? And eventually I actually got a 996 Turbo because I fell in love with it in the game. But that, that I guess the, the, the Porsche side, that's easy. This is a lot more difficult because you essentially had to build this from scratch. Yes, actually none of the parts were existing to public. So the body kit was, uh, I, there was a lot of GTR body kits out there, but none of them were accurate. And you could just tell, it's like the, the front fender wouldn't be that flush. Like you could, you could put a bottle on this and it would stay. But thankfully I found another guy who was passionate about it, Dave from 2M Auto Works. They decided they wanted to create the 911 Tribute GTR, which is why the front bumper is a little different. And when I saw that he was, he's been working on it, this, I think the kit sculpting it was about three years because when he wasn't working on a client's car, because they're building cars for SEMA there they would just like, take time out of the day when they're already tired and just sculpt a little bit here, a little bit there. So when I met him, it was about a year later that it was done and it came out right. There's no other body kit I'd want on that. All right, so, okay, it started off as a stock M3. Um, tell me what parts of the body are changed 
to make it like the the video game. So part. most wide body kits for the M3 G, uh, M3s in general just kind of go over. This is all one piece. Oh, okay. Yep. I see. So in the video game, this was like actually it wasn't uh, um, it, it wasn't attached. It was actually one piece also. Yep. Okay. And uh, you can see the rear flare. It it could just it sits so flush because it could be taken off and on, unscrewed and not screwed. So. Uh huh. What, okay, and then what else? Like this is the actually side functional. Exit. Yep. Everything here is from the game, minus the interior, because at the time the, uh, in Most Wanted, the interior wasn't really shown, but later on they added the full cage and the one red seat. That's why we're creating two cars. This is the street version. The track version is going to be fully caged with the one seat, the Sparkle red seat. But the street one's gonna be keeping like the AC available, keeping a couple of amenities there that we like. Yeah, but okay, so you driving this on the street, I'm sure you get so many looks. Yep. And <laughs> people are like, oh man, that's the one from Need for Speed, right? They yeah. just say, I mean. No, it's insane, because uh, sometimes it's like, you'll see cars out of nowhere and you think it's a cops in the middle of the night rolling up behind you, but this guy's just pulling up next to you. And I'm like just cruising after a long day. I'm just, I only bring it on the weekends now, but people just stop constantly, or you see them speed up, hit the brakes hard, come up right next to me and just give me like a, what's up? And it's like, yeah, it's cool. It's, I made it for the community. As much as I'm a fan, I know there's fans all over the world. You know, my favorite part about this livery is the fact that there's no decals on it. Yep. Like. It's so interesting because uh, essentially this was created for the video game. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's it's interesting that I guess that's part of the video game thing, right? Sometimes you just can't put logos on a car yeah. because licensing or whatever. But in with, with that, it actually created something like this. So let's keep going on the body kit. The, yeah. the rear bumper is is uh, one off too. Yep, all of it is just from the GTR race race team itself. Uh, even the wing, the wing had to be fabricated. This, uh, most people always said, like when we were going into it, what parts actually exist? Maybe I, I assume the wing, a lot of people think it's the APR wing, the GT, GT1000, I think it is. No, this was all fabricated. Guy in Jersey just said, I can make whatever you want, and he made it. Hmm, okay. And he did all the carbon fiber work and the gurney flap and everything. Wow. So how does this actually attach? Does it just attach to the trunk? So, no, it's to the chassis. Oh, really? Yep. And then also on the race car one, I'm sure it's going to actually provide so much downforce. Yep. Like even we've taken this one out a couple tracks, Irwindale and Chuckwalla. The downforce is amazing on that. It's horrible when you're driving on like the freeway and stuff, but on the track, this car comes alive. Definitely. Once you guys build the race car version, yep. it would be awesome to shoot that oh, on yeah, the absolutely. track. Oh, of course. For sure. So tell me about the wheel and tire combo. Is this uh, game correct also? Uh, well, they have Toyos because Toyos is a sponsor of Need for Speed. At least it is now in the newer ones. Uh, so it turns out for that size, 12 wide, it actually is uh, Toyo and Nido that make that size, which is unfortunate. But hey, that's what we got. Uh, I had, they're a little mismatch right now. I had a couple blowouts, so I had to just put some quick ones on the front. But everything's pretty much exactly like the game the only exception right now is that the bbs rims that are originally on the gtr the center locks those are made of magnesium so they're not good for potholes here one pothole and they're done so we're right now that's the next step is getting a company that could actually replicate those rims that make a more street uh but yes the track version will have the original magnesium bbs's hmm but so why focus why this car in particular there's so many video game cars that you could have built why this one in particular I think it's because in every game, I can tell you right now, Underground 1, you start off with an Integra and you use it for that one race. And in Underground 2, Rachel lets you use her 350Z, which is a beautiful car, but you only use it for about a total of like two minutes. This car, they let you race it around the city and you had like for what, four, maybe three, four good races. And the fact that you spend the whole game winning it back because somebody stole from you, it meant a lot more. And then you finish the game by escaping in this car that you just won back from the number one racer in the city. And then you elude all the cops and you clear by beating the game by clearing that bridge. There's something about that where it just felt like this is my car. And that's what made it so special. Um, and on top of that, uh, it's the cover car yeah. for that game. And not only that, it's... Um, it's cool that essentially it's a it's its own character yeah. in a video game right so a lot of people may not know this but i'm actually in need for speed oh, in really? the 2015 need for speed i show up as a npc um, i just show up and race you guys or bump you off it's actually my 240z i know i talk about that car a lot 
But um, yeah, I'm legitimately driving my 240Z in that game. And also I'm in a lot of the cutscenes. And on top of that, I am the last thing you see when you win the game. So we'll, we'll insert that clip. <laughs> Really? But um, yeah, we actually spent two weeks in London shooting all the cutscenes right for on. that, which it's kind of hilarious because it takes place in LA. Yeah. And I'm from LA, but we actually had to go to London to shoot the whole thing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Well, now I got to get your autograph on the dash because that's what I'm doing with all the cast members. Oh, <laughs> all the Need for Speed. Well, then that means you have to get Cam Block. You have to yep. get Bissimoto. You have to get Von Ginn Jr. Yep. Magnus, Magnus Walker. Yeah, you have to get uh, Robin, all those Papadakis, so Adam Ball, all of yeah. the guys. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, cool. All right. So then, in terms of uh, performance for the streetcar, this is the streetcar version. Yes. So you're going to probably reserve a lot of the performance for the race car. Exactly. Right? So before this was all Need for Speed out, we, this car has done two Cannonball runs already, and that's by trade. That's what I like to do: endurance Cannonball runs. And so I figured the S54 is already a reliable engine as it is. Uh, it, can, it can do 120 miles an hour for a few hours pretty good. And so we'll, all we did, we just added a velocity stacks or individual throttle bodies just to give it a little bit of like extra power. Can we take a look yeah, at that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, uh, I, I'm not the, I don't really know too much about BMWs, but my favorite part about the E46 is the fact that there's no body line here. Yeah. Right. It's the last BMW that's like that. Yep. Okay. All right. So yeah, this is an Autobahn car. So hence the being able to drive at 120 miles per hour for a long, long time. I think the longest we had it was about yeah. four hours and 10 minutes or so at 120. So um, have you had a chance to dyno this with this setup here? Uh, it was dynoed and it's pushing a little under, uh, I, I'm, the number is a little off. I want to say it's a little under 390, whereas stock it's about, it's on paper 333, but you know, it's always a little bit less than that. Uh, it it has a lot of power, way more power than it did before. The only problem is right now, like I was saying, the wing definitely has a lot of drag, so it's power that's reserved. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you planning on doing with the race car version? That's actually a really fun idea because we have uh, a bunch of friends have reached out and said, hey, well, we have the two JZs standing by. We have an RB, uh, was it 26? 26? And a friend of mine has an LS and like, well, let's just grenade them and see what sticks. And because we're doing it as more of like, we're just going to get out on the track, have some fun, compete in a few different series. We'll see what happens. We're just going to see what, what's fun. The first one is going to be the 2JZ though. So we'll see about that. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I like that. Um, in terms of paint, this is all real paint. It's all paint. Wow. What kind of, what color is it? Is it like a BMW silver? Or? So it's a platinum silver and the blue is a Le Mans blue. And we had to reach out to the actual development team and ask them for the color codes and they were really awesome got to meet habib who is the designer who created the livery and talked to him pick his brain a little bit he was really really awesome and that's actually another autograph that's going to go on the dash too oh really yeah. okay that's cool so where is he based out of uh, i want to say he's in canada okay so i've actually been to that studio okay in uh what 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 city is i it? know they have one in vancouver yeah, yeah. And... It's, it's the vancouver one yeah. yeah so i've actually been to that studio and yeah, th for those of you guys who don't know, I actually did work for Need for Speed EA for a while, um, you know, as a consultant, I helped them all out. That hence why I was in the 2015 game, you know, but um, part of it is that it's, it's just so cool to be able to be a part of car culture in that way in the from the video game side, you know, because Nowadays, as we mentioned before, you learn so much about cars and you learn Absolutely. so much about culture, the culture behind the cars through video games. Um, so definitely cannot wait to see the race car. Definitely cannot wait to see what you guys are going to build next. Yeah. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. I, I do have one thing for you. I need to give you oh, okay. a peeker sticker. Getting presents now? Yeah, so you don't have to put this on your car. You can Sweet. put it on your toolbox. You can put it anywhere. It's me in cartoon form. Hey, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see, I'm taking pictures and I got a little cannon. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> um, that's but, yeah. rad. Thank you so much for course, bringing man. your car out. Thanks for having me. It is so cool. I just love the story of, you know, bringing a video game car into real life. 
I absolutely love it. That's what we did it for. We did it for the fans, for the community. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, with that said, one last question. Yeah. Are you gonna, are you thinking about building another video game car? So it's funny you would ask that. Uh, this is something we've kind of toyed around with, uh, but we met with some EA people and we're talking about creating 14 different Need for Speed cars. What? 14? 14. Right now the list is 14. That's Thankfully, being around cars enough, we are able to get our hands on a lot of different really rare cars. And we're not trying to like get the, the purest mad, but all I'm going to say is there might be a Ford GT, there might be an R8, and there might be a Skyline in there. Wait, so the funny thing about that is like a, a lot of times these cars actually get built first and then the video game happens. Yep. For example, like Bongin Jr.'s RTRX, yep. that was a car first, then the video game came out, mm -hmm. you know, or it was kind of around the same time. It was actually built for the video game, yeah. right? Which I've had a chance to feature, I've had a chance to do burnouts in, I've had a chance to drive it, but it's, um, it's different, right? So this, as a, a fan build, it's amazing that you went through these great lengths to build it this way. Yeah, and it's crazy the things we learned about this car uh, on the way, just little design flaws are like, oh, that wasn't supposed to be that way. Oh, we only did it because that's how the game rendered it. Yeah. It's interesting. And so, like, we have a bunch of cars from Most Wanted coming down the pipeline, a couple from Carbon, uh, one from 2015, one from Payback, and two from Heat. Okay, I'm sorry. Sure. I keep trying to end this video, no, hey, but hey. I still have a lot of things to ask. Sure, sure. How did you actually get the correct reference for like just how did you get more detailed resolution reference for this? So that that was the hardest part. Where if you Google search the livery for this, there are about 20 different results, and each one is totally different. And then when one of the designers said, "Oh, we'll just follow the body lines," like, "Oh, really?" Like, yeah. Even in the newest uh, Need for Speed Heat. They, the rendering came out to where the back stripe is going into the side uh, panel window. And I thought, like, that can't be right. And I'm like, well, it's not. So follow the body lines, and that's what it is. Uh, and that was just talking to the designer. That could not have been any other, like, harder way to do it. Yeah, because um, uh, for the 2015 Need for Speed, they actually flew me out to uh, Gothenburg, one of the, the studios for EA in Sweden. And I actually went into the game as a developer and I could float around while the game's playing, you know? Yeah. Um, and this is like way before the game came out. Right. They actually hired me to take photos virtually in the game. So I could position the cars however I wanted. Right. I could add tire smoke. I could whatever, make it look like whatever. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and it's cool, you know, when you have those kind of tools, you are able to get way more detail yep. but you actually built it just off of the video game and you actually played the game and did screenshots and stuff uh yes we got a lot of help from people like uh the community like uh, lp ripper he does a lot of need for speed uh, gameplay videos he helps out a lot his community helps out immensely with that and then uh when it came down to painting it david 2m was the one that's like i think this is gonna look better like if we do this and i thought really like i try to fight him on a few things but then when the designer's like no it, it's right follow the lines like okay we're following the lines and if you guys say that's how it's supposed to be everything on a basic google search is incorrect and that's fine with me so that's how we end with this result of having a very accurate livery awesome all right i think that's a wrap finally um thank you again Thank you again, Van. Thank of you. Uh, that is, it's, so, it's so inspirational. I hope it inspires some of you guys to build your own video game car. I'll tell you what, if you guys want to support Hoonigan Autofocus, definitely check out my website, LarryChenPrints.com. You can get art for your walls, and also every single print comes with a Peeker sticker. So if you guys want to support us, definitely check out the website. I put up my 2021 collection just recently and there's some old prints there too that you can probably grab for yourself, but uh, definitely check it out. Thanks guys.